Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming to the presentation. Uh, I am Chen Li from Oregon State University. And today I'm going to present the experimental approach to elucidating damage mechani mechanisms when Class H cement were exposed to CO2-O2 sequestration conditions. So this research was uh, collaborated between Oregon State University and National Energy Technology Lab at Albany. So uh, please allow me to introduce the cement chemistry notation in one minute, because uh, I know most of the audience here are uh, geologists, and these are the notations we usually use in uh, cement chemistry field. So these C2S, C3S, C3A, and C4AF are the four major phases in the cement. Generally, they will react with the water, we call it hydration, and after hydration, these uh, three uh, major phases, uh, atronite, monosulfur aluminate, uh, calcium silicate hydrate, as well as calcium hydroxide, are the hydration products. And they will influence the integrity of the cement. So in my following presentation and the presentation given by my colleague Vahid, we, we are going to see a lot of these uh, chemistry notation. So now let's move forward. Uh, our first speaker, Malin, already uh, introduced this figure that there are possi uh, possible leak pathways for uh, uh, well-borne cement, and these, cement, these leakage could possibly cause the degradation of the cement. So these are some chemical formulas showing us that there are possible mechanisms that uh, cause the degradation of the cement. Generally, the carbon dioxide will dissolve in the water and form the carbonic acid, and with the formation of this acid, the, in the pH will increase. And after that, uh, the calcium will react with bicarbonate and to form the calcite. And also with the increase of the pH, the calcite will, uh, will transfer to bicarbonate as well as the CSH, the calcium silica hydrate, will uh, degrade to a morphous silica. So in previous research, in consideration of the economic benefit and the energy efficiency, people are starting trying to investigate the co-sequestration, which means CO2 were sequestered with other gases, such as oxygen and other uh, acidic gases, including uh, hydrogen sulfide and sulfur uh, dioxide. So in this environment, it creates a more aggressive and a more aggressive environment which could lead to more uh, possible uh, damage mechanisms. In previous research, it shows that these kind of co-sequestration could possibly lead to formation of secondary mineral precipitation. And these secondary mineral precipitation could cause the expansion of the cement. So this could be another uh, degradation mechanism of the cement. And also in previous research, it was found that uh, these uh, needle-like secondary mineral precipitation has been fo uh, was found in uh, cement while uh, the cement was sequestered with CO2 and O2. So based on this information, our uh, research, uh, the scope our, of our research is uh, quantify the strength of the cement when subjected to different types of conditions. And we're trying to investigate how these different exposure conditions will influence the integrity of the cement. Meanwhile, we're trying to determine if there are any secondary mineral precipitation form uh, during different types of, uh, different type of exposure. And in the end, uh, as I mentioned before, my colleague Vahid is going to give a presentation on the numerical modeling. We're trying to compare our experimental results with his numerical modeling. So uh, let me quickly introduce our test metrics. Here you may notice that in this test, we're using uh, prismatic uh, samples instead of cylindric samples at other uh, researchers used before. Here we just want to try to maximize the exposure condition. And here, for the first scenario, we're trying to quantify the temperature effect. In this case, uh, all the cement were mixed at 0.38 water cement ratio according to API. And uh, we're using two curing solutions. One of them is synthetic Mount Simon brine, which has very complicated brine composition. It has 
uh, sodium chloride, magnesium chloride, calcium chloride, uh, uh, sodium sulfate, and uh, sodium bicarbonate. And the other one is just the saturated lime water. That's the normal way we cure our cement samples. Meanwhile, these cement samples were subjected to different temperatures from 23 to 85 Celsius degree. And then the next scenario is high temperature with high pressure. Under this condition, the cement were subjected to high temperature as well as high temperature up to 4,200 PSI. And then the third one is the uh, CO2 sequestration effect. Under this effect, the cement were also cured under high temperature, high pressure, uh, Mount Simon, Mount, uh, synthetic Mount Simon brine. As well, uh, when the cement were cured for 28 days, the uh, supercritical CO2 were injected into the system. And then uh, the cement were subjected to CO2 for 14, 28, and 42 days. And then similarly as CO2O2 sequestration. So here are the techni uh, an analytical technique we used. We cast the cement six inch cement bars with the studs on the side. And then we use the comparator to monitor the length change. Meanwhile, we did a four uh, point modulus of rupture. And we used a, saw, a diamond saw to cut the cement samples. And then we cut these samples into one inch cubes and did the compressive strength on these. Meanwhile, we tested the pore solution. The pore solution is the water trapped in the micropores of the cement. And it contains very complicated minerals in it. And if we can obtain the composition of the pore solution, it will give us the interaction uh, and the hydration process of the cement. Meanwhile, we also did the SEM analysis of the cement to quantify uh, the alteration and they uh, trying to figure out if there is any uh, secondary mineral precipitation. So here are some results that showing the modulus of rupture. If you pay attention to the color of different uh, histograms, we can see that each color actually represents a different exposure condition. The figure on your left is the one exposed to simulated mountains, uh, synthetic mountain uh, Mountain, uh, synthetic, uh, synthetic mountain simon brine. And then the one on the right were the one actually exposed to uh, CO2 and CO2O2. And you may notice that there are two red bars on the right side which are missing, which because we have corrosion issues when CO2O2 get into the system. So we're missing 28-day uh, exposure and 42-day exposure, which are uh, 56 and 7 day, day data here. And then here we notice that when samples were exposed to uh, a CO2 and a CO2O2 uh, sequestration condition, there are lower modulus of rupture being observed. Also, when we look at the compressive strength, we can see that at a higher temperature that the compressive strength is much lower compared to that of uh, at a lower temperature. Here are some results of the pore solution data. And similarly, each uh, color represents, uh, a different, uh, uh, represents a different exposure condition. And here, if we look at the, uh, the uh, alkali content, which are the sodium and the potassium, which are the red and the yellow line showing us there is a decrease in alkalines. And meanwhile, if we look at the sulfate content, at high temperature, sulfate content usually keeps high, which including the one only subjected to the brine. And later, I will introduce more about the calcium. So this is a figure about the calcium. We can see that at 28 days, which the carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide with oxygen get into the system. And uh, in the brine solution, the carbon dioxide, uh, the calcium content get decreased, and then at the same time, the calcium content in the uh, pore solution actually got increased. So this is the figure show. This is an SEM anal analysis showing that the alteration of the cement. We can see there is an outer layer here uh, has the calcite with amorphous silica here. And then, we, if we moved inward a little bit, here are the calcium leaching zone, which, is, which are more porous. And then there is a very clear boundary here, showing that the altered and unaltered cement. With these 
uh, background, if we look at all our samples, we can see that the cement got altered after the CO2 get got injected into the system. And here we can see that at 14 day exposure, we have about nearly 800 micrometer alteration. And at 42 day exposure, we have about 1,000 uh, we have about 1,000 uh, alteration. And here are the comparison between the wine exposed to CO2 and CO2O2, both at 14 days. And uh, here we can see that the, the wine at 14 days with CO2O2 sequestration has a little bit lower uh, alteration average, but a higher variation. So also we, analyze, we have found that there are some secondary mineral precipitated in the micropores. And these are basically just the, the very small uh, prism-like, sh prism-shaped uh, small crystals. And we did SEM, and, uh, we did EDX analysis on these uh, small prisms, and we got these, these elements in the system. Basically, it contains very high amount of calcium and silica with other elements such as sodium, magnesium, aluminum, sulfate, uh, as well as iron. Uh, since these are at very early age, we cannot conclude what these minerals are. So these are the next step we're going to look into. So here are some concluding remarks. Um, basically, we figured that out the exposure conditions will have influence and impacts on the cement integrities. And those are my presentation. I will be more than happy to take your questions. Thank you. Questions? Uh, basically, this, this, uh, the cement prisms we're using are one inch by one inch by six inch. So these are very small scale specimens. Uh, that is why there are some variation between the specimens. And generally, we cast uh, uh, four specimens together, and then three of them were subjected to the, the sequestration condition. And then we take them out, and one will be used for pore press, and four of them will be cut for compressive strength. So those three will be tested for modulus of rupture because our autoclaves are pretty small. We could only accommodate three samples at a time. So uh, I think that is probably one reason that we got a, a relatively large variation. And the other thing is, as I mentioned, that uh, our specimen dimension is one inch by one inch. So that's probably another reason. So you mean uh, sampling the the small cubes? So you have in your, in your samples you have the adult cement, which presumably you have similar um, strength. Uh, Basically, the oh, sorry. Uh, basically, it's, if you look at the figure uh, above, that we have the specimen actually put in the autoclaves. And so they will be surrounded by CO2, and then we cut those by uh, diamond saw. And then there are actually two faces are more flat than the others. So we usually use those two faces for, uh, because when we cast the cement bars, there will be the, the top surface, which is like more has more like dent, like small, uh, fract not fractured, small like dent or things because of we use the plastic wrap to uh, wrap the surface. And then uh, there are two sides which are more flat than the others. So we usually use that side by, to do the compressive strength. But they should be similar on the alteration depth because uh, the specimens were surrounded by the carbon dioxide or carbon dioxide oxygen in the system. Please. So your mechanical test is on the whole sample? 
basically, what we were doing is we have these six inch sample, and then we cut the ends, and then we take two, sample, two one inch by one inch sample out of this, and then we cut a slice from it for SEM analysis, and we leave one whole sample for pore solution. So there are three specimens, right? And then we have two specimens. Uh, at first, we have three specimens. We break those for modulus of rupture. So all of those three were broken for modulus of rupture. And then we select the two of those and cut two of each from those two. That's four samples for compressive strength. And then we left one for poor solution analysis. They reacted. Just, react. just the react, just the the the, the, the cement with uh, sequestration. But we also have the specimens that only exposed to the Bryan solution, and uh, these are the ones showing here. The one on the left are the ones only subjected to the Bryan, and the ones on the right are subjected to the gas exposure. <laughs> 